Kia ora everybody, welcome back to another Muko for Muko's update. This is update number three. Just checking in with you all just to show you fellas where we are on our journey. So we just had the Matatua Kapahaka Regionals, as you would have seen from the last vlog update. And at the moment we're working on a children's book. And it's something that we've been thinking about for a little while. I'll show you fellas some of the preliminary sketches for what we're working on at the moment. And the reason we want to create children's books is to share some of our stories surrounding our art forms, um, our Māori art forms, and to use it as a way to also teach uh, values and principles with which to live by in this day and age. And we understand that uh, times have changed from when we were children and from when our parents were children, so it's trying to share uh, universal and timeless values that children today can um, use in order to help identify themselves and help to uh, navigate this world with a solid foundation. It sounds like super complex and trying to implement these sorts of ideas into a story or into multiple stories is uh, a hard task because we're both, like Sunny and I are both uh, super new to this. We don't know how to create a book. We've never published a book before. Uh, but it's an interesting and challenging journey and it's like all things that are hard um, it's going to be worth it and uh, we're determined to to succeed because of the amount of value that we want to add and this has nothing to do with you know trying to make money or trying to make a lot of money it has everything to do with trying to inspire our kids and to help them really be proud of being mouldy so some of the challenges so far is or have been just trying to word the story so we're working on one at the moment has been trying to just word the story in a language that can suit our demographic we're aiming for ages three to seven eight around that age range it's very hard because you know as we get older we get used to ourselves anyway we get used to speaking at a certain age language if i can say it that way and um having to flip it around and say all the things that we want to say and mean all the things that we want to mean but in a language that the children can understand and then also coming up with uh pictures that suit that age range best so the um uhi and ipu that we've already come up with uh we're gonna oh, we're gonna try to tweak the style a little bit they'll still look like uhi and ipu but trying to come up with a style that uh, we feel is more animated we feel is um, sort of more age appropriate because at the moment they kind of look like stickers which is what they are i suppose um you know with with how this business has started but we want to make characters or drawings in these books that you can see moving and as I've been practicing and as I've been uh, researching different styles, um, it's become apparent how effortless it looks, but how hard it actually is to create that look. But it's um, yeah, it's an interesting challenge, and it's 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 growth at the end of the day. Uh, but we've come up with like a couple of sort of styles and a couple of preliminary sketches that we're happy with. Uh, the feel of set so at the moment, it's a matter of just trying to roughly draw the whole book and trying to make the whole story cohesive trying to make it have a rhythm uh, we've been talking to some of our friends over the past couple of weeks who have children about the sorts of things that they would want to see in children's books and the sorts of things that they're used to seeing in children's books and some of the things are for boys especially they love to just look at the pictures first and a lot of the times they say that they make up their own stories just from the pictures so it's about trying to imagine trying to tell the story just with the pictures without any words so that's going to be a challenge in itself another thing is with the language having alliterations which is when you have a repetitive letter like peter piper picked a pick of pickled peppers so that's alliteration and it's really really catchy it helps things to stay in your mind um other things are rhyming of course and also having um just from the research that sunny's been doing online having 
sort of ideas um, confirmed and reiterated at the end of a story and it's hard to explain but if you just look at a children's book you'll see something usually an idea at the very beginning or a sentence and it'll say that same sentence or something very similar to it at the end so it's kind of like a nice wrap up and as we've been delving into this um, journey we've realized how many subtle nuances there are into making uh, children's books and it's kind of like uh, if I think about it in terms of art it's kind of like it's kind of like gestural painting or if you think about gestural anatomy gestural anatomy paintings all you're trying to do is just get the foundation or you're just trying to get the bare minimum information in there without having too much complexity if you can understand what I'm trying to say I think that's about it I won't talk too much about um, exactly what the story is about because we're trying to keep that a surprise but it's something that we think uh, you will all love and it's something that we wish we had as kids and something that uh, Māori children we feel need more of so uh, we're happy to fill that space if we can to the best of our ability and yeah so that's pretty much us at the moment working on a book also um, in terms of the temporary tattoos the moko uh, we're going to be releasing our goal anyway is to release two new designs every three months so we release two in january going to release another two what will that be april or next month so just go with the seasons and it's funny because we've been trying to think of designs that we anticipate children will love and we've just learnt over the weekend uh, the most popular is uh, mango, the mangopare design which I'll, I'll have here somewhere in the video and we found out that some people the reason that they buy it is because it's the biggest so more bang for your buck which is understandable like, I'd probably do the same but um, yeah just little things to consider uh, also another thing that we've learned too with our designs especially the designs like mangopare or the, the moko designs anyway is um, when we order them to order to split the order in half and have one half mirrored so when you have them on the body you can start creating symmetrical designs with them so they end up being kind of like two for one if you can understand that and also another thing we realized was a lot of people don't have the imagination to think about creative areas on the body to put moko they usually just put them on their arm or on the standard places that you always see which is all good but for us to consider applying them on different areas and taking photos just to suggest uh, yeah, creative areas on the body for kids to get moko and that'll s sort of help to sell certain designs as well and also thinking of combinations of moko to put together on the body to create a new piece in itself um, yeah just little learnings that we've had and also working on ideas for packages and things like that but yeah so that's update number three for Moko for Mokos hope you fellas enjoyed this uh, check out our website www.mokoformokos.com and buy your kids some designs we'll, we really appreciate the support and go follow us on Instagram as well at Moko for Mokos and I hope you enjoyed this video see you fellas in the next one Audiora